Ranked choice voting is a simple change to the way that we currently vote that improves participation and engagement and strengthens our democracy. In this video, you'll learn about some of the many benefits of ranked choice voting. For example, if you've ever wanted to support a non-traditional candidate, you may have worried that you'd be throwing your vote away. You may have even been told by others that you're wasting your vote or that you're helping to elect someone you don't even like because you're not voting for a frontrunner who can beat them. With ranked choice voting, you can vote for your preferred candidate as a first choice and then make a series of backup votes as a second choice, third choice, and so on. If your preferred candidate doesn't receive enough support, your vote automatically transfers to your next choice. This process continues until one candidate wins with majority support, that is, with more than 50% of the vote. With ranked choice voting, you can't throw your vote away, your vote stays intact, represents your true political priorities, and is never wasted. Ranked choice voting is not a new idea. Over 3 million Americans live in cities and towns already using ranked choice voting for local elections, and that number grows every year as more and more people understand how this simple change increases the range of voices and choices for voters and creates fairer election outcomes. State legislators in states across the country have introduced bills to allow cities and towns to adopt ranked choice voting for their municipal elections. Several states allow military personnel deployed overseas to use a ranked ballot so that their votes count throughout the preliminaries, primaries, and into general elections. Because ranked choice voting eliminates the spoiler effect when there are more than two candidates running, and because it eliminates the vote splitting that happens when candidates have overlapping areas of support around similar issues, it encourages more people to run for office. More candidates mean more voter engagement, more voices in the political conversation, more choices for voters across a broader range of issues, and more accurate election outcomes. Ranked choice voting also results in more diverse representation. In multi-seat elections, more women and members of historically underrepresented groups are elected to town councils, select boards, and school committees. A study of four cities using ranked choice voting found that women and people of color run for and win office more often than they do in cities without ranked choice voting. This simple change allows representation from all perspectives in proportion to voter support. Ranked choice voting welcomes more voices into our political process and ensures outcomes that more accurately reflect the will of the voters. Ranked choice voting also increases voter turnout. In cities that have used ranked choice voting for a number of election cycles, voter turnout improves every year. Before ranked choice voting was used in Minneapolis, for example, there were precincts with voter turnout as low as 4% for their municipal elections. This past November, when ranked choice voting was used for the third time to elect their mayor and city council, voter turnout across the city was 43%. Ranked choice voting encourages positive campaigning. Our current system encourages frontrunners to focus on the most divisive and polarizing issues to energize their base of support. Too often, candidates present truly complex issues as overly simplistic either-or scenarios. Voters are tired of toxic campaign rhetoric and mudslinging. With ranked choice voting, candidates must reach out to as many voters as possible, including those who may support their opponents. While candidates must still differentiate themselves to earn first choice support, those who emphasize negative attacks over positive ideas will lose the crucial second and third choice votes needed to win. Research shows that voters in cities using ranked choice voting experience campaign messages that are more positive and constructive compared to voters in cities without ranked choice voting. With ranked choice voting, candidates focus on issues with more widespread support. They have incentive to find areas of commonality with their opponents. Ranked choice voting encourages more civility in the political process. Ranked choice voting is also better for our elected officials because they attain elected office with a more accurate sense of their level of support. The city of Santa Fe, New Mexico, for example, just elected their mayor with ranked choice voting for the first time. Alan Weber won the plurality vote in the first round with 39 percent. 
but because this was not more than 50% of the votes cast, tabulation continued by eliminating the lowest vote getter and transferring votes to those voters' next choices. By the final round, with only two candidates remaining, his support had grown to over 66%. That is a much stronger mandate for his vision of the city and a more accurate measure of his support. Now you have a better sense of some of the many benefits of ranked choice voting. More choices, more voices, better representation and voter engagement all work to strengthen our democracy and result in fair election outcomes.